Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Velocity 2014 in New York City. I'm here with Mehdi Dowdy. Mehdi, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Sure. So you're with you're the CEO of Catchpoint. Yes, I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Catchpoint. Okay, yes. so briefly, because Catchpoint just come out of nowhere and you're here. <laughs> actually, what? we just celebrated our seventh, uh, sixth birthday. Actually, sixth. Yeah, we're based in New York. Uh, we uh, we are an offspring of the Double Click slash Google Mafia in New York. And, and were uh, you part of that mafia? Yes, I was. I'm okay. very lucky to be part of that. And so my specialty was monitoring there. And we decided to, in 2008 to start a, a new business in the monitoring space. So six years later, here we are. And it's nice to be finally at Velocity, having our booth, etc. So it's really a nice achievement. Great. Well, it's wonderful to have Thank you. Thank you. So Catchpoint's been pushing Apple kind of hard to support navigation timing in Safari. Right. Yeah. Why is that important for you guys? Well, I would love to take all the credit, obviously, but a lot of people in the Are community doing. have have uh, have been pushing for that. We just launched a petition, and we've been we've been making a lot of noise about it. When you look at Apple for a company that promotes quality, that promotes uh, perfection, you know, we the DevOps community have been completely left behind, completely blind in the real user measurement uh, methodologies that have been uh, uh, appearing lately in the last year, year and a half. So for them to finally, in the latest iOS 8 and uh, the latest uh, OS X that is going to come out next week, uh, finally supporting that, it's literally folks are going to open their eyes. I mean, you look at iOS, it's 90% of the traffic in the US for tablet and mobile, and we're all blind. So, so Safari is, is kind of a second class right now and it's coming into the Absolutely. first world? Yeah, I mean, or? all the major browsers have been supporting navigation timing from, from IE to Chrome to, to Firefox and Safari has been the only one you know, ignoring it. Even though if it was built in into the source code of WebKit, the Safari version always uh, and never sure, had that. We're sure Apple's going to do this. I've been it's, testing every it's, single it's version. It's not an evil no, boy. No, I okay. hope not. I've been testing every single version to make sure they have it. So. Good. So you've also written a lot about net neutrality, and it's a personal thing for you. Yes. So what is your point on the net well, neutrality? Well, I, I come from a country where uh, you know freedom of expression is not sometimes always respected, and I look at uh, I lo I've always looked at the internet as one of the greatest medium for every human person to express themselves, right? So uh, that's that's the personal connection I have there. And and when I, when I look at the debate that is ha has been happening here, shall we do this, shall we limit this, shall we route traffic this other way? It's like, guys, where, where do we want to be? Do we want to go back to being like China or, or North Korea? I mean, that's a dangerous path that we need to take. Now, I also understand that the ISPs have to make a buck and you know the infrastructure we're streaming more we're uploading mm -hmm. more pictures it's not cheap for them so I think th there needs to be a, a happy medium where um, if I want to use more electricity my meter just keeps spinning at home right nothing stops me from using more electricity I just need to pay for it and I think that's what the end users have to agree to is like I want more, I'll pay for more. Yeah, so where, do, where does throttling fit in that net neutrality thing? Because, like, is it fair for a ISP to throttle a service like Netflix? Because I don't think it's fair. Because have, I've paid my dues. Exactly. I've paid Netflix and I've paid Time Warner, for example. And so, for me, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but the most dangerous thing is where does it stop? Because right, it's one of right. those things that's once you one piece. That's yeah, yeah. one piece. Oh, maybe you shouldn't watch CNN. Maybe you should watch Fox. No, thanks. Where, <laughs> but where does it stop? So yeah. it's a very dangerous thing. And I think, uh, and unfortunately, you know, maybe it was because of the Apple release. Nobody paid attention to what happened last week. But there was a whole new. Um, a protest online, but it didn't get a, a lot of attraction, unfortunately. So it's something that I think it's fair for cons for ISPs and the backbone providers, the level threes, the Verizon, etc., that have to invest billions in infrastructure to make a buck, right? So I don't think that's, but it's not fair for them to say, you know what, this traffic, I'm going to put it on this lane, on that other lane, and that that's that's a dangerous slope we're on. So switching speeds a little bit here, what has changed in monitoring? So you've been in monitoring for a while. Yes. <laughs> and since your days at DoubleClick, what has changed in the last, like, let's say three years? Uh, so I think what has changed, I mean, a lot of things haven't changed. I'll tell you, the complexity has just gotten more complex. I mean, you look at the web page now, it's uh, relying on more third-party providers than ever. 
uh, dual DNS provider, dual CDN provider. So things have just gotten more and more complex. Um, monitoring itself, I think there is still a holy grail that we're all trying to achieve, which is being able to tell the DevOps guy or the ops guy or the network guy, here is the problem, it's right here, go and fix this piece. I think there is still a lot of noise. Uh, there's a lot of noise coming out of the tool sets. There is a lot of noise coming from the internet. So it's very hard to, uh, to give them that level of confidence. So the, it becomes too many alarms, too many alerts, etc. cetera. So, uh, so that part hasn't changed yet, unfortunately, but the tools have gotten much better uh, much more reliable, much more uh, user friendly to use, and we see that. I mean, you look at the at uh, the number of tools out there, from PagerDuty to Datadog to Catchpoint to Thousand Eyes, etc. There are some really cool technologies out there that are helping the customers solve their problems. So, helping customers solve their problems, it seems like almost every website is an app now. Yes. Um, so how do we make sure that that experience is good everywhere in the world? Like, because I know I recently was in China right. and I was battling the Great Firewall right. and it was very frustrating. Right. I could not imagine what it's like to live in yeah. a frustrating world right. all the time. Right. How do we make it better for everyone? Um, so China is a, is a great it's, example. The, and actually you have a lot more countries, uh, especially in South America, North, Af North Africa, that are deploying more and more solutions like the Chinese firewall. Turkey is an example of them. So the, the Chinese model is actually spreading no, more great. than the US model, <laughs> if you want to look at it that way. So in China, what, what we see is a lot of major brands, right, that are trying to compete for the eyeballs, the wallets of the Chinese consumer, which, you know, it's 800 million people that can afford to buy a lot of things. But so they make this investment, they go and launch a, an e-commerce site or whatnot in China, but then their DNS is hosted in Switzerland. And then their CDN is not serving inside China. So what you end up happening, you as a, as a user in China, you have to go through the firewall of China. And uh, we see mistakes like you have a web page and it has a Facebook or a Google tag or, or and Twitter, it and it stops yeah. because they do not allow those things. So, if people are going to make an effort to be in China, they really have to have a complete Chinese mentality. The entire infrastructure needs to be on the ground in China. Not in Hong Kong, not in Tokyo, not in Singapore, inside China. I mean, we made a, an unbelievable investment in China. We've opened 30 monitoring stations in China. I mean, and we see the data, it's horrible. It's, 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 uh, it's insane. I mean, so, some of the web pages take 20, 30, 40 seconds to load. So the advice is, if you're in China, you act like you're in China. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, you have to treat China as a, as, as a complete little uh, box, and you need to be inside that box entirely. Okay. So what do you think is the biggest challenge facing most web companies today um, in bringing a consistent and great yeah. user experience? That, that's, that's a great question. So. This is like you're going to see the doctor and he's going to tell you, you know, you need to go and exercise. Sure. Right? So and you go and eat, exercise. Eat better and right, exercise. eat better. So uh, you're going to sit down the first night, you're going to make yourself a nice salad, you're going to wake up in the morning, you're going to feel great, right? But then next morning, it's like, you know what, I feel great, I can go and have that burger again. And that's what happens. People lose focus. They go and do it the first time, the second time, and then they say, oh, we have other priorities. So it doesn't matter. So th this cycle of we improve performance, then we forget about performance then end user experience is bad again, then we put it back we'll on the front. So I think it's really about consistency. The lack of consistency is, is I mean, we see it with some of our customers where, and they tell us like, Mehdi, you know, uh, this month we have other priorities to worry about. We can't worry about performance anymore. It's like, okay. So Mehdi, what, what is the future with Catchpoint? What, what, what's on your radar of where you'd like to take catch point in the future. Sure, so we have this very cool platform that allows our customers to do all kind of monitoring from DNS to APIs to web to, to mobile, etc. We want, uh, what, what we hear from our customers is they want to monitor as many things from as many places as possible. So really that's what we're focused on, meaning that we want to open as many nodes as possible around the world. We, have, we want to have as many vantage points as possible. And then the next thing for us is like this thing. Wearables? Wearables is key. The, this internet of things is, in my opinion, an unbelievable market because it's great that you can have a fridge that can order the milk at home. You just want to make sure that it ordered milk and not eggs, right? So Yeah, I'm also looking forward to not only the wearables, but the machine-to-machine -machine right, instrumenting absolutely. of that absolutely. and monitoring We are working that. with some customers on some of these cool projects. And, and I mean, the, 
the ability that the machine, you need to make sure that the machine can talk to the other machine and get the right results, otherwise it can it can have a bad impact. So. Excellent. Mehdi, thank you for thank your you, time. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much.